Hi, good morning everybody. Welcome to the class of, uh, I mean the series of lectures on rate processes. Today I, I am going to talk on ultra fast processes. I will just give you brief introduction uh, of this uh, topic. Now, uh, that is ultra fast processes in chemistry. Now, in our uh, last uh, lecture, uh, last two lectures, we have talked about uh, this uh, electrode reactions that is redox reaction which is going on at the electrode surface. That is when a, when a a metal piece is dipped into a solution containing electrolytes, then uh, various things uh, happen and if you pass electricity, then uh, you know various reactions may take place depending on uh, the voltage, then current density etcetera, etcetera. So, under that heading, uh, one aspect which we have not talked about if time permits later on maybe we can take up that is uh, corrosion. Maybe we will have a, a very brief introduction on that also. Now, uh, we have uh, <coughs> talked about fast reactions and uh, <coughs> now various methodologies may be adopted to detect you know the rate for those fast reactions like uh, stopped flow then uh, plug flow, then relaxation methods. So, uh, these are used to prove fast kinetics. Now, yet another uh, you know time domain is there which is faster than this fast reactions, okay, which occurs may be in less than a nanosecond that is may be in the picosecond time scale that is 10 to the power minus 12 second or maybe in the femtosecond time scale that is 10 to the power minus 15. Imagine 10 to the power minus 15 second and our persistence of vision is one tenth of a second. So, how fast imagine how fast those processes are taking place in molecular systems. Okay. So, that we are <coughs> We, we, we are just going to talk about you know not in in great detail but we will just give you brief introduction because because of the limitation of the of the scope we may not be able to go deeper into into uh, the subject okay so let us uh, look at the time scale of various processes and reactions related to chemistry you see it uh, starts from you know 10 to the power minus 54 to 10 to the power 17 that is the age of the universe and 10 to the power minus 54 that is the Planck time. You see in between in between <coughs> it is you know it starts from 10 to the power minus 15 minus 14 13 12 11 and uh, up to 10 to the power minus uh, 3 or maybe even uh, you know longer that is second okay 10 to the power 0 okay so uh, just look at the various processes uh, there are there are uh, various processes and depending on their on their time scale of observation on the time scale of observation you know uh, we can uh, classify. Okay. First, let us have a look at uh, you know it, let us start from the slowest one in, in under this uh, under this uh, you know uh, classification okay. that is phosphorescence. Okay. What is phosphorescence? It is also a, a radiative process and radiative process which occurs uh, uh, you know between the states of uh, different multiplicity. That is suppose uh, you know if there is a radiative transition that is occurring between say 
is a triplet to a singlet okay or maybe singlet to triplet okay maybe some singlet to another triplet that is there is a change in spin multiplicity while the transition is taking place along with along with uh, emission of radiation h nu so this is called phosphorescence and it is it is a, it is a very slow process that is time if you if you think of uh, the time required for the process to be completed it takes uh, you know uh, maybe even seconds it starts from millisecond uh, okay less than uh, millisecond to maybe up to seconds okay in certain cases when you use a rigid matrix solid matrix or maybe if you go to a very low temperature maybe 77 kelvin that is liquid nitrogen temperature <coughs> you can see you know you can observe phosphorescence okay maybe visible phosphorescence or maybe maybe uh, near infrared phosphorescence okay so uh, this is a very slow slow process okay then comes the radical reactions now radical reaction that occurs you know in the time scale of 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus uh, 5 seconds okay it is more than microsecond it takes time okay when i talked about this uh, radical pair recombination that is spin chemistry in that case uh, you know, time scale of observation of the process mostly comes in the range of you know you know uh, microsecond okay or sometimes it is a little little uh, you know faster maybe maybe you know several nanoseconds as well so radical reactions you know it it spans from minus 5 to minus 3 okay so this is also a a, a a slow process although if you think of observation by eyes no it is not possible but because it is 10 to the minus 5 to minus 3 only thing is that you can observe phosphorescence if it's uh, you know lifetime is of the order of seconds otherwise it is not possible because of the limitation of our eyes because of the persistence of vision okay next uh, you know if you think of there is a, a, a huge range that starts from maybe more than a millisecond down to a nanosecond which is okay which is encompassed by uh, radioactive decay okay a huge range minus 9 to minus 3 even more okay next uh, there is you know in, in in violet color you see it is protein folding and conformational changes okay with time it is again a red process okay protein folding means you know biomolecules they they are you know uh, biopolymers okay having you know uh, a specific sequence of amino acid residues okay and when these uh, amino acid i mean this biopolymer is present in the in solution phase so it is it is you know folded in a definitive pattern it has got a folded three folded three dimensional structure okay so what happens is that if you if you um, change the ph of the solution maybe you add some additive from outside maybe uh, urea or guanidinium chloride or maybe surfactant then uh, this folded structure gets unfolded or maybe if you even if you increase the temperature then this unfolding may take place so this folding unfolding it takes time so this protein folding and also the corresponding conformational changes that you know falls in the time scale of you know um, of the order of nanosecond a little more than a nanosecond to to you know um, several uh, hundreds of uh, microsecond okay so this is this uh, uh, time scale is encompassed by you know this protein folding and conformational uh, changes okay that is time required uh, to undergo conformational modifications okay we say because of binding of uh, a second sub uh, substance with the protein okay what is happening that you know uh, this uh, protein may get folded or maybe may get unfolded okay
Next, uh, look at uh, this intersystem crossing and internal conversion. It is also encompassing a huge range, maybe minus 11 to a little uh, more than minus 8 or maybe a little less than minus 7. So, minus 11 in between minus 11 and minus 7. So, intersystem crossing is basically if you think of the Jablonski diagram, which is well known in photochemistry, Jablonski diagram. which you know um, represents which is, is you know composite form wh where all the processes uh, probable processes can be integrated in a, in, a, in, a, in a single photograph or a single description. So, so this is your S0, S1 then maybe this is T1 or maybe higher uh, states say S2 okay. maybe there is another T this is a T prime this is T. Okay. So, this is you know absorption, this is another absorption, okay. this is internal conversion that is from S2 to S1 without change in the multiplicity or maybe, maybe from here to here non radiative de excitation from, from say singlet to triplet there is a change in multiplicity. Okay. So, this is called the inter system crossing. So, this is inter system crossing and internal conversion these are all non radiative that is de excitation to another state giving rise to heat not giving rise to photons. So, it is called the non radiative de excitation. So, non radiative de excitation of these two kinds. Okay. So, that um, has got you know time scale of observation of the order of 10 to the power minus 11 to 10 to the power minus 7 in between that. Okay. Again, if you think of a, a proton transfer process, proton transfer process it is in the range of minus 10 to minus 9, okay, in the range of minus 10 to minus 9. So, proton transfer process, so 10 to the power minus 10 to 10 to the power minus 9. Okay. So, it is also fast and maybe if you recall the diffusion control uh, limit parallel to that maybe. Okay. So, um, it is reverse of this uh, um, you know time time is time constant. So, time constant is of the order of diffusion control maybe maybe a little different, but uh, in that range. Okay. So, proton transfer falls in, in that range. Then, uh, you know abstraction and elimination reaction these abstraction elimination reactions are quite fast it is minus 12 to minus 10 in in this range okay minus 12 to minus 10 in between this so maybe hydrogen abstraction process or maybe elimination e1 or e2 like elimination reaction uh, or maybe elimination of some some group maybe you have you have read in organic chemistry so that is also very fast in the range of you know picosecond to maybe several uh, no, you know sub nanosecond. Okay. Then uh, there is another thing which is rotational motion. Rotational motion means if you think of a molecule, this molecule can have various motions and quantized motion if you think of quantized motion then it has got electronic motion. Then vibrational motion and then rotational motion. Okay. Translational motion you know is, uh, is spectroscopically trivial because it is it does not represent any quantized you know motion. Okay. So, so these are the, the, the three uh, degrees of freedom that is electronic, vibrational and, and rotational uh, degrees of freedom are there. So, rotation is basically like this maybe about the internuclear axis or maybe like this or maybe like this depending on whether the molecule is a, molecule is a linear or is an or is a nonlinear one okay so this rotational motion it is quite fast is it is uh, in the range of 10 to the power minus uh, 12 to 10 to the power minus 10 a little uh, less or more 
Okay, so this rotational motion it takes time compared to other motions like fast, still faster motion that is the vibrational motion. So, vibrational motion is like this suppose you have got water. So, it is like this it is doing like this motion. Okay. Or maybe like uh, so this is a triatomic system. So, or maybe a diatomic system like a diatomic system it is doing like this. Okay. So, it is a vibration. Uh, okay. So, vibration uh, is faster you see for rotation to occur you know this molecule I mean atoms this atom or that atom has to change its position while doing that because it does not require you know, uh, you know rotation means see, this atom may be lift may be transferred to here I mean by this motion. So, that means there is a huge change of position from here to here, but for vibration it is not that much therefore, vibration takes less time compared to rotation. So, vibrational motion it is of the order of you know little more than 10 to the power 14 to 10 to the power minus 12 in picosecond range. Vibrational relaxation is in between, in between vibration and rotation. Okay, vibrational relaxation means why vibrational relaxation it loses its energy and uh, you know molecule when it gets ex ex excited to a high vibrational level then it, it does like this. So, energy is dissipated and thereby it goes to the lower energy level. So, that is called the uh, vibrational relaxation. So, system is relaxed to a lower state. So, vibrational relaxation takes uh, you know in between vibrational motion and rotational motion. There is another reaction which is called the Diels Alder reaction. Okay. So, Diels Alder reaction uh, it is it is a it is another kind of reaction um, maintaining the orbital symmetry uh, you know this this reaction is also you know you know like uh, say the typical example is a di in and di fill. So, you have got a di in and a di fill. Okay. So, this will give rise to okay. so typical mechanism as if this is but it, it it is it is it is not like uh, maybe it is better represented by you know a six member transition state okay so it's a diels it's a typical diels alder reaction so uh, diels alder is in between you know is close to vibration relaxation you know time wise okay and it is also falling in between vibrational and rotational it is of the order of 10 to the minus 13 to maybe 10 to the power uh, little less than 10 to the power uh, 11 minus 11. Collisions in liquid, collisions in liquid it is uh, average uh, number is 10 to the power minus 14 second. Dissociation reaction is even faster compared to your abstraction and elimination reaction it is it is in the range of uh, it is in the range of uh, um, of course, in the in the 10 to the minus uh, 14 to minus th minus 13. Now, electron motion it is around 10 to the power minus 15 in femtosecond time time scale. This is picosecond, this is nanosecond, this is microsecond, this is millisecond. Okay, so femtosecond and uh, uh, where electron motion motion in atoms and molecules and also tunneling. So, as I told you that if you think of a molecule then it can have you know electronic motion, it can have uh, uh, rotational motion, it can, ha can have uh, vibrational motion. So, these three motions of these three motions electronic motion is fastest compared to compared to uh, vibrational and rotational motion. So, I guess I um, I just uh, given you uh, a rough estimate of the uh, of the time scales of observation of various processes and that is journey from <laughs> say millisecond to femtosecond that is means how you can reach I mean not in terms of you know 
in between in between what you encounter in between like first between phosphorescence and electron motion what are the other possible motions that fall in 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 between uh, this that is in the intermediate time scale between minus 15 to minus 3 so there are there are quite a number of processes that one may be thinking of so when it is the it is the question of so here what we are going to focus on is the is the electronic motion maybe maybe vibrational motion as well or various faster motion so so uh, primarily the uh, this ultra fast region may be may be some somewhere over here okay so maybe uh, uh, maybe minus 12 around minus 12 to minus 15 it is the it is the ultra fast region this is a very fast process okay and therefore if this is a very fast process then uh, you need to of course to observe this uh, faster events you need to have uh, a very fast detecting system i mean detector or maybe a system which is capable of detecting uh, this uh, faster changing i mean fastest changing processes okay so that is also a big challenge for this ultra fast uh, processes so uh, here to probe this ultra fast processes we take the help of we have to take the help of this uh, light of course light because uh, its speed is huge and uh, maybe in 1 nanosecond it travels about 1 foot okay so by you know um, so in that case uh, you can generate the time lag between two successive photons or maybe two pulses by changing the you know optical path there is a path which is traveled by the by by the light beam between maybe one mirror and that another mirror okay so that is the optical path in between that so from this mirror reflected to this mirror if and then it is reflected so this is the optical path between between these two points okay so we have to take the help of uh, help of uh, lasers now it is uh, in that case uh, you know this faster process here uh, there is a predominance of nonlinear effects okay and ultra fast pulses have their applications relevant to chemistry okay now when it is you know duration is very short so you know if you think of this energy time uncertainty okay del e del t is of the order of h cross then if this time uncertainty is small that is if it is femtosecond this then energy uncertainty is more so that means short short duration of the pulses and it has got a larger bandwidth that is energy uncertainty is more okay and high instantaneous power which is delivered to the system can cause unique physical and and some cases chemical processes as well because peak power is high okay for ordinary lights or maybe you know say xenon lamp xenon lamp is generally used for doing many spectroscopic experiment although this is intense but uh, ordinary light or maybe these lights they are not that intense because it is not a directed beam so it is you know this way divergent okay so that's why intensity wise it is small but with the advent of lasers okay now uh, traditional lights light sources are replaced with uh, laser light okay and uh, laser light means intensity that is peak power is high if it is a pulsed laser or even if it is a continuous laser since the light beam is i mean all the photons are directed okay therefore uh, you know intensity is high okay now a nonlinear medium is one in which the dielectric polarization vector p responds nonlinearly to applied electric field in this case from light unlike the ordinary case that is p 
is basically uh, polarization vector dielectric polarization is uh, directly proportional to E okay. uh, with E 0 uh, epsilon 0 is the free space permittivity chi is the susceptibility of the medium and for intensity when it intensity is high then it can be expanded to higher power. So, therefore, polarization you know dielectric polarization you know is uh, very much dependent on the intensity of the electric field. So, if the intensity of the electric field is low then these terms are not that important, but when at the moment it is increasing means suppose in case of high power laser that is short pulse lasers right I know when it is pulse say if the duration of uh, pulse is very small say several hundreds of femtosecond maybe or maybe picosecond. So, pulse height is high and peak intensity is high therefore, electric field intensity increases therefore, E square and E cube terms these are progressively increasing. So, so these terms are contributing. So, therefore, nonlinear I mean uh, this dielectric polarization vector has got some nonlinear contribution. So, nonlinearity nonlinear effects come into action. Okay. So, that is why we take the help of um, I know the moment we take the help of ultra fast uh, pulses then the uh, the uh, nonlinear effects are quite obvious. Okay. Now, ultra fast laser spectroscopy you know um, basic laser principles I already have explained. Okay, I already have explained to you in, in another instance that is uh, when I talked about this uh, laser flash photolysis. Okay. That is a uh, that is a modification of the conventional uh, um, conventional uh, flash photolysis. Okay, that's a modification of the conventional, and there we have talked about. I mean, ruby laser, helium neon laser, and uh, and there are many other kind of laser. So so uh, this uh, and uh, there are there are many variations of this. Like uh, uh, when it is a pulse laser, you may shape the pulse, or maybe you know uh, you, ca you can lengthen the pulse you can shorten the pulse. So, that part is not uh, you know we are not going to discuss on that because that involves a separate uh, uh, topic that is you know uh, spectroscopy. Okay. So, which is beyond the scope of this uh, current course. So, we will just skip this portions, but we will we'll, uh, just uh, consider that uh, here um, you know laser source is needed and maybe depending on our requirement we need a short pulse we need a long pulse okay and ultra fast experiment uh, among ultra fast experiment transient absorption spectroscopy is uh, is one of the important experiments okay like flash photolysis that is also transient absorption but in that case your laser pulse width is longer maybe you know several uh, nanoseconds maybe 5 nanoseconds or 6 nanoseconds or 7 nanoseconds like that. So, of the order of 10 and uh, you know, close to 10 nanoseconds. So, in 10 nanoseconds that means, uh, it is uh, time window is quite long. So, therefore, if any process is occurring you know like even less than 1 nanosecond then we cannot detect that is ordinary you know conventional uh, laser flash photolysis you cannot detect you know much faster process that is you cannot go down to you know uh, like less than 1 nanosecond because your laser pulse is wider. So, that is the difficulty that is why uh, another variation of uh, transient absorption spectroscopy where you use ultra short lasers okay, is needed. Okay. So, that is called your and, and another name of this uh, is called the and it has got another name which is called the uh, pump probe spectroscopy that is you pump a system to higher level and then in the excited state what is going on you can probe with the help of a second uh, weak light source. Okay. That is basically what you do is you, you try to find out you, you probe the absorption due to excitation is, is there any change in absorbance due to excitation that we want to probe and that we probe as a function of time. Okay. Now, uh, there are many types of lasers. Okay. I mean I talked about you know solid state like uh, 
solid state lasers having lasing material distributed in a solid matrix such as ruby neodymium laser that is neodymium yttrium aluminum garnet okay and flash lamps are in most of the cases they you know pump source okay and this nd yag laser emits in the inter infrared region 1064 nanometer okay not one point it is a typo so 1 1064 nanometer semiconductor laser sometimes called the diode lasers okay these are pn junctions or pn junction they, these are having pn junction and current is the pump source and uh, maybe it has got the application in uh, laser printer cd players okay these are the you know basic application these are semiconductor laser dye laser okay so complex organic dyes are used okay such as rhodamine b rhodamine 6 j many coumarin dyes are used okay and it is the lasing media and what you do you you uh, mm, it, and it is a tunable over a, over a broad range of wavelengths and uh, depending on its fluorescence uh, spectra and this uh, lasing is achieved by another laser so that is your pump laser okay maybe that laser you know excites your pumps your uh, dye to the excited state and then other processes uh, occurring are occurring okay so so, uh, in that case, uh, dye lasers are also tunable. Gas lasers like helium neon laser, argon ion laser, which is visible and which, is, which has got visible and UV carbon dioxide laser, it is in the infrared uh, region okay. and are used for cutting hard materials. So, these are uh, uses. Excimer laser, okay. so it is excited state uh, dimer laser. Uh, use um, you know use reactive gases such as chlorine, fluorine, etc. Mixed with inert gas such as argon, krypton, xenon. Okay, xenon fluoride is a is a typical you know excimer laser. When electrically stimulated, uh, a pseudo molecule dimer is produced and uh, excimers lays in the UV region. So there are there are many different kinds of laser. And now it is the semiconductor laser. Uh, these are also used for you know for for uh, pumping your ultra short uh, lasers okay so solid state lasers are used are very useful and they are they are having quite a long uh, lifetime i mean they can they can run for you know they can be used for uh, for many years okay uh, okay these are the types of lasers now what is the resolution as i told you that resolution is you know delta t delta nu that is frequency uncertainty and time uncertainty okay so uh, frequency uncertainty is less means time uncertainty is more and vice versa so for a for a uh, uh, you know it is irradiance versus time plot and this is the spectrum this one is the spectrum and this is the irradiance so for long pulse that is the pulse stays for longer time that is full width half maxima that is width at half maxima. So, this is your maxima. So, I am half maxima. This full width half maxima FW HM is more compared to this one. And you see its spectrum is very narrow. Whereas, for the short pulse FW HM full width at half, half maxima, this is smaller, but it is dispersed more. Its frequency uncertainty is more. So, FW H m frequency F w H m is more compared to this one. So, this comes from the uncertainty principle. So, depending on whether we want a you know long pulse or we want a short pulse or we want a you know uh, spectrum which is a narrower one or a broader one okay? uh, that is that is decided you know by your requirement whether you want to probe a very very fast process or a very slow process or, or a slower process. So, for a faster process you know you should have this choice than this one. So, this is a typical you know nanosecond say nanosecond laser flash photoresist thing and say this is a uh, picosecond pump probe, pump probe you know uh, experiment. Okay. So, how to generate these pulses? There are many many ways to generate these pulses. Q switching, 
again i am telling you it is not i am just i will just name because of the because of uh, the scope okay so q switching is one one method okay i told you probably you, you remember that uh, laser cavity requires two parallel uh, mirrors so if you if you rotate one mirror like this way then the moment it is exactly parallel to that then standing wave pattern i mean the cavity is filled with you know radiation and then it will less again it is if it is rotating no radiation again parallel radiation so it is it is some kind of you know switching um, the cavity on and off so q switching is another way of uh, uh, generating the pulses okay mode locking is another it can be passive or active mode locking pulse shortening can be done by gvd group velocity dis uh, dispersion and pulse lengthening can be done by uh, chirping pulse chirping okay so these are the, the these are the various uh, ways to generate uh, pulses okay what is a pump probe technique now now pump pump probe technique apart from your uh, this laser flash photolysis since uh, uh, it does you know uh, in nanosecond time region so so to generate your time axis you know uh, this uh, you just use the uh, time axis of your uh, cathode ray oscilloscope okay you you know you just uh, pump your sample with radiation and the moment the pump falls on 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 your sample a second detector which detects the first incoming photon onto the on onto your sample that is a photodiode so that triggers your cathode ray oscilloscope or oscilloscope and then it keeps on collecting the signal for for some period so that generates your time axis but here since it is much faster so so that is for your uh, uh, cathode ray, cathode ray oscilloscope so electronically you generate the time axis that is you measure the time you start measuring the time from the moment the light falls onto your sample okay but if it is still faster if it is faster than nanosecond then electronics cannot do it has got some basic limitation so therefore you have to have the help of uh, you have to take the help of light to generate your you know uh, time axis okay so so you see that uh, this is your excitation pulse okay it is divided into two okay maybe it is a 50% beam splitter okay then this is directed this way okay so this is your excitation pulse and another portion another portion maybe uh, maybe or maybe less less than 50% that is maybe most of the most of the pulse maybe say 90% not 50% 90% is directed this way only 10% is directed this way okay so the optical path length is from here so this length plus that length then this length and then this one up to sample this length so total length and the this length when these two match then we say that these two pulses are are in zero time that is they are exactly matched okay so that is your matching and then what you do <coughs> that you keep on changing this length by by you know changing the position of this this retro reflector i mean this reflect there is a pair of reflector so if you increase the length then probe pulse will reach the sample at some later time so what do you do you start your experiment when this uh, pump and probe excitation pulse and probe pulse they are exactly matched temporally in time so that is your zero time okay that is your zero time so when they are temporally matched so this is your probe pulse and say this is your pump pulse they are exactly matched in time <coughs> okay so this pump pulse initiates some reaction maybe some physical process maybe some chemical process okay so it initiates some reaction and then what you do the moment it initiates that time this pulse is present i mean this uh, the probe pulse so you you collect the signal that is how this probe pulse means how much of this probe pulse is 
transmitted through the sample and to the detector. So, that is basically you are measuring the transmittance. Okay? So, maybe so initial intensity you measure the intensity of the probe pulse as a function of this delay. So, therefore, say intensity is this much. Maybe you change the delay and you increase the delay so that this probe pulse is reaching at some later point. So, that means not exactly at the at the very very you know um, very uh, presence of the, your I mean the moment this uh, your pump pulse is present or, or, or entering to the sample. So, after this pump pulse is entering, so it, your, your situation is here, then say your system is decaying like this. Okay. That means, your active species which is absorbing maybe because it is a pump probe absorption technique. So, your active species is maximum maybe at this time. So, therefore, they say your signal is here. So, if your probe pulse reaches somewhere over here, then active species is somewhat less. Therefore, your amount of absorption will be less that is amount of transmitted light will be more. So, absorption will be less in the same way. So, you keep on recording your detector number I mean how much the detector is detecting your detector signal. Okay. So, what you do you you send your excitation pulse and probe pulse at the same time. So, that is your 0 time and then you keep on you keep on you know keep on changing this delay increase the delay. So, that this probe pulse is reaching at, at some later point. Okay. And here this lens is used because uh, they have to be you know directed at one point that is maybe here they should be you know specially and temporarily matched. They may be temporarily matched, but if they are not specially matched, specially matched means suppose this volume of solution has got the excitation. I mean say because of your pump pulse this much of solution out of say this huge volume of your solution is excited. So, therefore, you have to make sure that your that your probe pulse should and must pass through this this region where the your active species is generated. That is why this this <coughs> you know pump and and your and your uh, probe pulse they are to be you know temporally and specially overlapped. Temporally means their pulse sh should be you know matched at 0 time that is called your temporal time wise they are matched and also specially they should be matched. And here is the detector which detects the signal as a function of this delay. So, th if there is a any true absorption then you know uh, I mean if there is a true absorption then there will be change in intensity of the of the probe beam. Okay? Intensity of the probe pulse will be changed if there is any absorption or maybe if there is any re emission stimulated emission then also probe energy probe pulse energy will be altered. So, this alteration <coughs> is plotted as a function of this delay. Now, this delay means you you means uh, how much of how much of length this delay has been made I mean how much of length this delay has been traveled by. So, I mean initially that said your delay is here I mean this retro reflector later on suppose it is shifted to here. So, this much of additional distance has been traveled due to has been traveled uh, distance uh, is traveled by the light. So, that this additional length corresponds to some delay. Okay. Why some delay? Because this this probe will reach at some later time because time I mean the light source takes time light pulse takes time to reach one point to another although it is very fast, but maybe if you think in this way that one nanosecond corresponds to one foot. So, that means one nanosecond 10 to the power minus 9 second corresponds to one foot that is 30.5 centimeter. Okay. So, that means, this much of this plus that that much of extra length corresponds to how much of time did it. So, this way you plot I mean you generate your x axis okay, and you generate the you know kinetics of the process and then you fit with appropriate uh, function. So, that you can generate 
the various number that is the time required for a process to take place that is the process which we are trying to probe. <coughs> the thing is that the sample has to absorb your excitation pulse and maybe <coughs> it generate it will generate some uh, species and that species will be probed by your probe, probe pulse. Sometime it is it, it is a white light or sometime it is it is um, close to some single color <coughs> because if it is a <coughs> nano I mean picosecond or maybe if it is a femtosecond pulse then you know you know by this wavelength separation that is it is a broadband pulse it can be regarded as a broadband pulse like this it is a broadband pulse. So, broadband pulse means you can you know you can scan for a range of frequencies. Okay, so, it is it is a pump probe technique by which you can you can also follow the kinetics of the decay or maybe kinetics of the generation of some species. Maybe suppose uh, because of this uh, incidence of this uh, excitation pulse a new species is generated suppose because of some reaction. So, that means because of the generation of this new species maybe uh, there is a change in uh, you know probe pulse energy. So, that you have to monitor. Okay. <coughs> so, as I told you white light may be useful for this. So, for generating the white light you know um, may be quartz or may be um, ethylene glycol okay, or may be a sapphire plate is useful and if you shine this uh, sapphire plate or maybe quartz plate or water pure water and if you shine I mean if you focus this ultra short laser onto this this water then white light will be generated and with the help of a dispersing medium you can generate all the frequencies. Okay. So, it is it is ranging from mid UV to mid IR region. So, therefore, uh, you know using ultra short light sources you can generate a white probe light okay, which is essential for you know uh, following the uh, you know doing the absorbance spectroscopy of the excited species. Okay. So, uh, so uh, this uh, palm probe is a transient absorption experiment, transient absorption experiment means you know uh, you generate the species it is transient species and uh, with the help of another second uh, probe I mean second probe means another probe you you pro, I mean you look into the concentration of uh, concentration of that species and that species is not present under ordinary circumstance only because of your laser incidence when laser falls on that because of your laser incidence uh, this transient species is generated. So, transient absorption gives you a lot of information about the processes that are going on that may go that may proceed immediately after uh, laser excitation that laser may be your uh, uh, femtosecond laser may be picosecond laser. So, it is basically a pump probe technique like, like uh, your uh, laser flash photolysis only difference is that here to generate your time axis you have to use the delay okay because otherwise if it is a, a picosecond process then by the help of electronics you cannot generate the time axis that is you shine with light and if you want to follow this you know change of intensity with time by means of a photo detector and a your oscilloscope it is not possible because of the time I know limitation of, of the electronics. So, for nanosecond flash photolysis or even microsecond uh, oscilloscope is useful because there is no problem with uh, its limitation and also the time scale, but here it is the problem. Okay, that is why we have to use your this uh, device device means for generating your time axis that is we are taking the help that uh, the pulse requires a time from here to here that is a time difference that may be very small, but that 
we will be using to generate your time axis. There is another technique which is called fluorescence up conversion technique that is amalgamation of two photons. Okay? Amalgamation of two photons uh, to generate one photon. Okay. So, that we will take up maybe in, in the in the next, uh, next uh, piece of lectures in uh, one of the next pieces of lectures. Okay. And uh, so, so what we have learnt uh, from you know this uh, discussion. So, remaining part that is uh, other different experimental things we will we'll take up one after another, but uh, up till now what we have learnt let us try to go back that uh, we have talked about this various uh, you know time scales of uh, observation of various processes maybe maybe it is from your millisecond to femtosecond and these processes are very important in uh, chemical sense in chemistry okay maybe sometime in chemical biology as well like we see our vision okay that is also a light driven process sometime light light driven you know activity of some uh, some antifungal or some agent maybe photodynamic therapy there also light is very important okay so we talked about this you know try to understand uh, the various time scales then we give a brief introduction of nonlinear effect. To see this nonlinear effect, we need ultra fast lasers, and uh, then types of lasers we just ta uh, talked about a little bit. Then resolution is an important factor. We are compromising; it is resolution. We are compromising, and you know, time resolution. Then we are compromising onto frequency and vice versa. Now, various pulse, uh, you know, shapes can be. I mean, uh, whether it is long pulse or short pulse that uh, that can be generated and depending on our need depending on the time scale of observation we can generate short pulse or long pulse and we we discussed you know out of various uh, ultra fast techniques palm probe is one of the one of the popular uh, techniques okay so and white light is also useful for that and how this is uh, done that also we, we just try to give you the idea so so, ultra fast uh, processes are very interesting and very important in many, many cases. So, we will take up one after another and, uh, and actually this using this ultra fast spectroscopy, uh, people you know scientists have been able to probe the transition state. Okay. So, observation of quantum bits and uh, you know, you know uh, that we, we are going to, going to take up maybe in next uh, pieces of lectures. So, uh, so in the next lecture, we will talk about other examples, uh, I mean different experiments. Okay? So, uh, that we will take up. Um, so, till then thank you. <laughs>